Hi friends, welcome back to Redhead Threads. I'm Jess, and today I'm going to show you part two of the Cinderella transformation dress. Today I'm going to show you how I made the ball gown and how it all fit together. So we're going to also get some behind the scenes footage of the show itself. You're going to see how she transforms on stage and backstage during some of those quick changes we had for the show. Hi friends, it has been a minute. It's been at least a week since I've worked on Cinderella's dress. I've been working on a lot of other costumes for Cinderella so far, a couple of great coats for the knights some vests, Lord Sebastian's costume, so I'm finally getting back to Cinderella today. Uh, I want to show you what I'm going to be working with and then we're going to get started. I'm working specifically on the ball gown today. So I've finished the, the peasant dress that's going over top that will rip off to reveal the ball gown underneath. Today's the ball gown, so let's look at what we've got. For the majority of her dress, I'm going to be working with a cream and silver brocade that I got from Joann's. It's got a nice sort of subtle shimmer to it that I think is going to look really good under the lights. I've got sort of a pearlescent silvery white for the accent fabric so this is going to be um, the underskirt part that's going to be peeking through and also her, her stomacher on the bodice. I don't think I'm actually going to line the dress but it called for some sort of lining fabric to make up the rest of the petticoat. Um, so that's what this is for. I used it on Topher's vest. I really wasn't too pleased with it. I don't know if you can see, but it's got a very loose weave. It's very plastic feeling. I mean, I almost feel like I'm sewing a plastic bag and just punching holes through it because it does not recover well from needles. So we'll see how much of that I actually end up using. But either way, it's sort of a nice grayish white lining that I'm sure we will use in the costume shop at some point. As for trimmings, I've got a lot of stuff that we just had lying around the costume shop. Um, this piece of beading was obviously taken off of another garment at some point. I haven't decided how I want to use it yet, but it's just too, it's too sparkly not to use. I mean, look at that. It's so shiny. I'm a magpie when it comes to, to fabrics and trim and beading, so that's a problem. Um, we have some lace, some other kind of sparkly trim, boning. Should I need it? As I think I explained before when making Cinderella's peasant dress, I don't like the idea of using boning in theater costumes, at least for a small community theater like ours, because there's a good chance that it has to be fitted on somebody else at some point, so I might just dispense with that. And then I have coats of white thread that I'm going to be using on my serger. It's got black thread on it right now, so before I get started I need to switch that over. So the pattern that I'm going to be using for Cinderella's ball gown is Simplicity 4092. It's um, sort of a 1780s, 1770s inspired dress. It's made so that you have a full petticoat underneath the dress, but I think I'm going to just cut out that front piece and attach it to the overdress to make that transition simpler because um, I really want as little to this dress as possible just to downplay the layers because whatever she's wearing has to get shoved up inside of her peasant skirt at some point. So I'm going to do some pattern hacking today to make that work. Here we go. have one big last piece to do before I cut the accent pieces and as you can see it was going to be too wide for just one fold over the fabric so I had to lay it selvage to selvage along each side to be able to cut it out properly it's a big one 
cutting two of these for the back of the skirt so she will have lots of volume by the time I'm done. Hopefully it all fits inside the peasant skirt. So I'm doing something that I don't think I've ever had to do before for a sewing project, although I know that it's not an uncommon thing to do. I'm working on cutting the pieces for the, the petticoat slit in the front and also the stomacher piece, and I got as much fabric as they told me to. A lot of times I buy the amount of fabric that it says on the package and I end up having way more than I need. I don't know why that works. Everybody tells me the same thing, so I'm assuming that there's a grand conspiracy between the pattern makers and the fabric industry to make you buy more fabric than you need. Because it's always more fabric than what you need, but it's not enough to ever really make something else out of, which is a pain. But anyways, for this fabric, both of the pieces need cut on the fold, and there wasn't going to be enough length on the fold to get the job done, so I realized you have to make two folds. You do that by folding it sort of, not quite in the thirds, like a big old piece of poster board, but you do it just enough that you have a fold for your one piece and then a fold for your other piece. And so I'm still going to end up with a good bit extra that I can use for trimming or for a future project, um, but you can see I have the two selvages lined up here. So then I get two folds and I get essentially more length out of the fabric that way. So that's a neat trick that you can try if you find yourself in a similar situation. I'm going to get started assembling uh, Cinderella's ball gown because I have the pieces ironed now and tech week is this week so it needs to be ready to go. Let's do this. So I'm working on sewing together the skirt for the ball gown now. I wanted to make a note of this because I am doing something different from the pattern here. The pattern has me leave an opening here at the back for the zipper. However, I'm not going to be putting a zipper in the back because we're going to have a front closure on the dress. So I've gone ahead and sewed that the whole way. Ooh, where'd you go? So that's seen the whole way up to the top um, because we're going to have snaps at the front for her to change in and out of quickly. So that's just one minor change I'm making to the pattern. I did that on her, um, her peasant dress as well. Confession time. I've never done pleats before. Uh, like, I don't think ever, ever. So I hope this is right. I mean, it looks, it looks pretty even, right? Those two sides look the same. I'm going to sew it together and find out. So we'll see how this goes. There's so much skirt here. I have no idea how this is all going to fit up inside of her green bustle, but darn it, we're gonna try. We're gonna make it work. So 
So I have the bodice attached to the skirt now. It still needs the stomacher and the front petticoat piece, which is lying somewhere. I don't know. Where. Oh, there it is. Um, so it's hanging out over there in my quilting machine. Um, so I'm going to attach that straight on to the front of the skirt. Um, so it'll just be more like an accent piece. The pattern calls for a full petticoat underneath, which I'm not doing for the sake of volume because remember, it's all got to fit under this all bunched up in here. So as little skirt as possible. Um, and then between it's possible and 10 minutes ago when they're having the ball, we'll put a, an actual petticoat um, or crinoline underneath of the dress to, to fill it out and give it that more volume. But I am loving how this fabric looks. It's just the right amount of shimmery and pearly and I think it's going to look really awesome. So let's keep moving along. I realized as I was getting ready to attach the front uh, petticoat accent piece, it's way too flimsy. It's very thin material and it's not going to hold up real well if I try and bridge this gap in the front with it. So instead I'm going to put in just like a little sort of piece of a waistband that will attach here and then attach with a D hook on the other side. So that will that will keep it closed and give it structure the whole way around the waistline because there's I mean, it's plenty sturdy here. The fabric's fairly thick and it's got plenty of layers to it but it just is going to need a little bit of help across the front. As I mentioned before, there's not a zipper in the back of this. It's just going to have snap closures down to here or so. And then I'm hoping that the silver coat will overlap enough that I don't have to seal it down the front. That would be really great. So we're testing it on the, the actress this afternoon and we'll see how that's going to work. So let's get to the petticoat skirt. All right, I have attached the waistband to the shimmery petticoat fabric, and now I'm just going to sew it on the other side by stitching in the ditch on the front. So for that, I like to use my hemming foot. Um, it's got sort of this piece of metal, this line that runs up the middle. For stitching in the ditch, it's really helpful because it really helps you stay on that line. Um, and you can also sew slightly to the left or the right of that line. For this one, I'm going to just stitch along the middle, stitch in the ditch, and that will sew the, the back part of the, the waistband onto the petticoat front. So, there we go. It's not super neat and tidy, but it is what it is. There were a lot of things for this show that I really wish I had more time to be more picky about or to give a nicer finish to it but there's just so much that we had to build for this show and it's tech week and if you've ever designed costumes for a show or if you've had to sew costumes for a show or even if you're just you know a parent that gets called in to help volunteer but when you kind of hit that tech week mark there's this dual feeling of I don't have enough time and also I have spent too much time on this project already so I find myself feeling like both. I want this show to be done and finished so I can put it behind me and move on to my next project, but I also wish I had another month to work on costumes because there's just so much more to do. The stomacher is just way too flimsy as it is. Like I said, it's the same as the petticoat fabric, so same problem here. I am in a time crunch, so instead of iron-on interfacing, I'm choosing to use some canvas to stiffen it up, and I've got a layer of the lining here. So I'm just going to pin it, use this as my pattern piece, and cut both at once, um, and then sew them up together real quick. I'm going back through now and just trimming the corners and around the, the bottom of the bodice of the stomacher so that when I turn it out, it won't have bulges in the corners. So I'm going to take this and flip it, flip it a gibbet. Oh, that's not right. Oh. I shouldn't have put the canvas right up next to the 
the pearlescent fabric, I should have had the lining there, and then the canvas on the outside, so that would turn to the inside. As it is, I'll not have the lining on the inside, because that's what happens when you rush. That's okay. No one's going to see the canvas on the inside of the dress, and I don't have time to fix it. All right, I've got waistband petticoat in. I'm going to just fold over and finish the edge of the bodice. And then I have the stomacher, which I have pressed canvas, mud, whatever. Um, and I went ahead and top stitched along the edge just to keep it nice and crisp. So this I'm going to, uh, I really wanted to to sew the one edge in, but I think that I ought to wait until I can get it on my actress before I sew it to the bodice because if I do that now, I'm probably gonna end up having to move it and this fabric is not forgiving when it comes to holes. It tends to snag. So we're going to pack up and head over to the theater and I'm gonna take her other bodice and peasant costume with me because that still needs snaps on it. And we're gonna go from there and see if we can get this transformation to actually work. Hey everyone, I am back after having tried our dress on um, our Ella last night after rehearsals. Okay, so I'm just leaving Kavad. I really wish that I could have filmed the first test of Cinderella's transformation for you because it was amazing. I screamed, I nearly cried, it actually worked. Um, but unfortunately we just had her pinned into the ball gown and she didn't have her whites with her so we didn't have anything underneath and I didn't want there to be a fashion disaster on camera. So I'm heading down to the shop now to put some things away and grab some stuff to take home with me to keep working on and I will have a video of it, the transformation after our first rehearsal tomorrow. I have a couple things to tweak on the ball gown before I can really bling her out and get all the trimmings put on. And I have a couple adjustments to make to the peasant dress as well. I need to gather up the green skirt and add some snaps, but my goal is to have this piece totally finished for rehearsal tonight so that we can start playing around with it. Our first dress rehearsal isn't until tomorrow, which is Tuesday, tonight's Monday. Tonight we're just doing microphones, but I want to start integrating some of the costumes for the quick changes because I know those are going to take a little bit more time to adjust and sort of get those worked into the flow of the show. So let me show you what I'm working on today with the the transformation dress and fingers crossed today is the last day that you'll see me working on it and then we'll get some fun footage of her tonight at rehearsals and from dress rehearsals later this week. So here is the body of the ball gown. I marked it off yesterday at the top, or where the stomacher is going to sit, right there. I'm going to just fold this surged edge over and tack it down, and I'll probably have some trim go up along the collar as well. Um, the other thing I really needed to adjust on her last night, and I probably shouldn't have sewed this down until I had the chance to try it on her, but I sewed the petticoat skirt to the overskirt yesterday, and I'm gonna go along today and seam rip that because this waistband piece works well but it needs to get moved over a couple of inches to there um, and I think I'm actually going to sew it down here and then add a snap to where it's going to fit in underneath the other side so it'll close like that. Um, the stomacher I'm also going to work on embellishing today. I went through my trims and found some lace pieces that I had used um, on a bridal veil a while back so I had a lot of scraps left over from this actually just because of the yardage I needed for the original project. I'm going to use some of this on the stomacher and on the petticoat piece and then I have snaps that I'm going to put up along the side as I did with the peasant dress. I have the applique pinned down to the stomacher and I'm going to start sewing that on. I'm going to be using um, my darning foot. It's sort of a little loop and to use this you set the stitch length to zero and uh, the width to zero and you set it on the darning function so that way the feed dog is disengaged and it allows you to just move the piece of fabric around underneath the needle instead of having it move itself. So 
let's do a quick demonstration of that. So another change that I made to my machine besides the stitch length and width and setting the, the darning function, I also changed out my needle from a universal needle to a jeans needle. Um, I've heard that it's very helpful when you're sewing over sequins and beading because jeans needles are sharper and a little bit thicker than your typical universal needle. So when I hit a piece of plastic, hopefully it's not going to just shatter on me. We'll see how that goes. Okay, so I have the application on the bodice. It shed beads and sequins everywhere, but it's so shiny now. It's just gonna, ah, oh, that's gonna be great. I can't wait. I left the edges clear because one side is gonna get sewn onto one half of the bodice and the other side is going to get these snaps put on it. Same as with the, the peasant dress. So it'll just be a quick and easy on and off, but yeah. It's gonna look great on the final dress. One of the last steps to get this transformation dress together is to get the skirt in a formation so that it's not going to become bulk of its own and be too hard for us to, to gather up into the bodice when she's changing backstage. So I'm going to be taking sections of the green skirt. I'm not gathering the whole thing though because I don't want it to get stuck when the white dress drops down. Um, so I'm just going to do sections, and then each section is going to get a snap put on it. And then the snaps are going to attach to the peasant bodice. So let's move on. We are here at Kavad in the green room. Say hi to our actors! Hi! hi. Oh, hi. <laughs> Hello! Hi. We are about to get the lovely Hannah Rao, our Ella, into her transformation dress. <laughs> um, so as I showed you earlier, I went back and added snaps and adjusted the skirt. So she has her mic pack on. I've given a little bit more seam allowance for the mic pack. Nope, oh, don't do it. Don't move. <gasps> no, you did this yesterday. I did do this yesterday. The other way. <laughs> it looks like it shouldn't be this way. And then it is. Do you want me to take this off? Because I have Are those like your white whites? This was not. No. This was just my shirt. Also, okay. it's inside out. <laughs> this was my whites. Okay. Can we lose the gray shirt? Then? Yeah. Okay. We're um, going to try this again. Take two. Take two. You remember two. which way this goes on? Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm here to come get a shot of the closures. <laughs> so we're snapping her in nice and snug. And the waistband underneath gets tucked into the snap here. Stomacher lays flat over top of everything else. I haven't tacked this part of the skirt down to anything yet. We're going to see how well it stays. It'll probably get a snap or something. But there she is. Would you give us a twirl? <laughs> All right, so now for part two, we have to get her into the peasant dress as well. So there's a little bit of wrangling involved there. The peasant skirt is going to go on underneath her ball gown. And it velcros in the back. 
Well, like, if there was a dictionary and then you looked under the word mess, the description would just be a picture of you. And then our Cinderella is going to help hold her skirt in place while we get the rest of the bodice on. Kindness. I live to serve. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not yeah, I mean, that kind of is yeah, so. Cinderella's MO. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty true. Transformation is very You guys don't really know who's the biggest jerk. <laughs> Yeah, that's actually. Alright. So those snaps that I attached earlier, get a little closer. Oh, yeah, that's We're going to start for her YouTube front and right of center with that one. And work our way around, attaching the snaps under the bodice as we go. His personality. The last little bit I've left open just because the bodice has to rip off and then drop. So this is just going to get tucked underneath. Hannah practiced this yesterday. She knows exactly what to do. I don't know. I only shoot because it's colored. You know, red, red. And then the last of the green gets tucked up into the bodice. And you just want to make sure that the sides are all tucked in so there's none of the white ball gown showing. But it should hold fairly well. So yeah, she's got a, a nice bustle and poof going on here, but she won't have this for the whole show. There are a couple scenes where she doesn't have to have the transformation dress on, so she'll just have her peasant dress on over top. In the transformation, Ella is going to rip the bodice from here. These snaps will come undone, and as she spins, it's going to drop and release the ball gown underneath. Ah, keep going, keep going, keep going. Scare this too many. Hi friends, I am here for our Sunday afternoon matinee for Cinderella at Kavad Academy of the Arts and I'm going to try and get some footage today of the quick changes both backstage and on stage so that you can see how Cinderella's look finally came together. Let's go ahead in the theater. <laughs> Alright, so we're getting into the scene now where the Madame and the stepsisters are going to be getting ready for the ball. Cinderella is going to be coming off stage soon and we're going to be taking off her peasant dress and putting the ball gown on underneath it. Until this point in the show she's just been wearing her peasant dress so that change is coming up soon. <laughs> We bedazzled a pair of pumps for Cinderella's glass slippers and then also added some bling to a pair of flats so that she would have something to safely dance around in. At the ball, Cinderella wears a crinoline under her skirt to give her lots of volume and good flow while she's dancing. I also changed the snap where her petticoat attaches to the rest of the skirt to elastic because the snap was not staying during that big dance number.
During intermission, our Cinderella changes out of her crinoline and into the peasant skirt underneath of her white dress to make that transition after the pursuit a little bit easier. So we're backstage during the Stepsisters Lament. We have the pursuit coming on soon, which is a big Scooby-Doo chase between the prince and Cinderella and Cinderella's cohort of footmen. So we had it worked out that she'll change back bit by bit into her peasant costume as the pursuit is happening. So she is currently wearing her headscarf along with her ball gown, and she has her green and brown peasant dress underneath of her ball gown skirt. There's going to be a change in the middle where I put on her peasant top when she runs off stage and then she's going to run back on half transformed after the pursuit she comes back on stage fully in her peasant dress and you're going to see us finish that transformation before the scene ends you thought there was just one big transformation dress in this show, there's actually two. Because in this version of Cinderella, they added a little bit of a rewrite where one of the stepsisters, Gabrielle, actually ends up being very sweet. And so for the second part of the show, the prince holds a banquet to try and lure Cinderella back in so he can meet her again and actually get to know her. And Gabrielle gives Ella her pink dress to wear to the banquet, which the stepmother ferociously tears apart and then it gets magically transformed into a gold dress. So I am going to show you that second transformation as well, along with the behind the scenes quick change of how we made it work. The gold dress was borrowed from Conestoga Christian School, and before that it came from Sight and Sound in Lancaster. The pink dress is a replica of Gabrielle's ball gown. It has several tearaway points built into the dress. The lace cuffs and the bow all tear off. We re-sewed them on every night so that the stepmother could rip them off all over again. We shall march to the palace steps and I will speak with the prince. And you only have one thing to worry about. And who are you speaking to? Well, Ella, my dear cousin, she's talked to the prince. What? Ella, talk to the prince. Yes, she went to the ball. They talked about the kingdom and how did the And uh, tonight she's going to break with. The wall is upside down. Well, 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 well,
What is this? This is very counter revolutionary. Well, I like a man who wants to change the world, but I also like the man who brought me flowers. Who brought me flowers? <laughs> no, no, I couldn't. You just said so. Optimism grips off. Optimism? Watch yourself go. wasn't the only character that had quick changes for this show. There was a lot else going on behind the scenes. For the 50 costumes that we had in this show, half of those were made by scratch, by hand, from our amazing costume team. So I would like to send a quick thank you to Jess, Tammy, Joelle, and Karen for all of the work that you put in on our costumes. Thank you. They looked amazing. If you'd like to learn more about how to get involved with Kavad Academy of the Arts in New Holland, Pennsylvania, we'd be happy to have you join our team of staff and volunteers. We also offer classes for kids through adults in dancing, acting, singing, and more. Go to kavod.org, C-A-V-O-D.org to sign up to volunteer and get on our team today. Thanks for watching everybody. I know that was a long video, but I hope it was worth it. Most of my videos are probably not going to be that long. I'm gonna try and keep them to 15 minutes or less. If you have any more questions about how I made the dress, I'd love to hear from you. Um, also, if you've ever made a transformation dress for Cinderella or any other uh, character or cosplay, link your video below, I'd love to check it out. If you'd like to see more of my sewing adventures in costuming, quilting, etc., make sure that you subscribe, click that link below, like, share with your friends, every little bit helps. And I will see you again very soon with my next adventure.